On June the 10th in the year 2000, at 7 o'clock in the morning, 100 litres of water fell in 45 minutes. This turned the area into an astonishing torrent of stones and water that filled everything. For a few instants, more than 22 cubic metres per second passed through this area, flooding the ground floors of adjacent buildings and moving over 30,000 tonnes of mud and stones, devastating everything in their way. Luckily, this happened early in the morning when nobody was outside. At about quarter to seven, we interrupted the matin service. Cars were floating in the square and were eventually carried away by the torrent of water. We saw it from the monastery cells and then we realized the magnitude of the catastrophe. The intense rainfall on Montserrat mountain and in its surroundings, with maximums exceeding 220 millimetres in less than 24 hours, caused sudden swelling of rivers, floodings, landslides, displacements of thousands of tons of sediments, destructions of buildings and even the collapse of a bridge in one of the most important motorways in Spain, connecting the cities of Barcelona and Madrid. Although the oldest people in the area cannot recall anything like this, we know from historical records that such situations are not exceptional, both on the Mediterranean side of Europe and in the Pyrenees, the Alps and other mountain areas. In all these areas, people have to live with the risk of flooding and landslides caused by very intense rainfall, which can be enhanced by the area's orography and geomorphology to the point of becoming catastrophic. The Mediterranean Basin is a closed area with a lot of mountains surrounding it. This facilitates the creation of its own air mass, which between the end of summer and the beginning of autumn is hot and moist. This air mass is potentially unstable because when the condensation occurs, a large amount of latent heat is released and can intensify air convection. When high latitude atmospheric perturbation reach Mediterranean area, this warm air may rise, producing sudden storms with heavy rain. The topography plays an important role, not only contributing to the convection, but also defining stationary convergence zones between different air masses. Already, up to this point in 2010, there has been significant flooding in different parts of Europe such as the floods that caused 48 casualties on the island of Madeira. And the evacuation of 2,000 people in Sicily. However, we know from history that these and many other regions of Europe have been devastated on numerous occasions by such flooding. From 1998 to 2004 alone, Europe suffered more than 100 floods causing 700 deaths, almost half a million displacements of people and damages estimated to cost over 25,000 million euros. Until now, the solution adopted has been to build protection structures and automated hydro-meteorological networks. However, the great challenge for the future is to prepare effective measures of risk management, plan the use of areas prone to flooding, and generate protocols for taking actions in emergency situations. It is also fundamental to educate people and make them aware of the risks inherent in these phenomena in order to prepare effective mechanisms of prevention, mitigation, and action to deal with these situations when they occur again. Moreover, the effects of flooding may increase in the future depending on climate change, due to inadequate management of river areas or to the pressure of urban development in areas prone to flooding and growth of population and properties in such places.
Confronted with this problem, the European Parliament approved a directive on flooding in 2007. It specifies that by 2013, member states must prepare detailed maps of danger and risk, and that by 2015, they must have created plans for flood risk management. Since the year 2000, when the Catalan Water Agency was created, all the technical documentation needed to apply this directive is developed by different projects. The INUNCAT project developed hazard maps for the whole region of Catalonia. Further developments from this project are in progress to determine areas susceptible to be flooded and to a better planning of river areas in Catalonia's inland basins. What remains now is to transfer all this technical information to the different municipalities at risk in Catalonia, about 50% of the total, so they can prepare the local emergency plans, provide detailed documentation on areas at risk of flooding, develop vulnerability studies of urban areas and describe the actions to be taken in case of flooding. Flash flooding is one of the most difficult phenomena to deal with in risk management. It requires to put in place early warning systems able to forecast torrential rain events and consequently potential damages. These complex situations make the development of flash flood early warning systems, typically associated with mountain areas and Mediterranean regions, the most important scientific challenge faced today in the water management cycle. The European Union has promoted a range of research projects within the seventh framework program for research and development. One of these is the IMPRINTS project. The aim of the project is to study the phenomena that produce the flash floods and the debris flow events, proposing new tools to support risk management and the early warning system. 19 public and private European institutions participate in this project, including the collaboration of universities from South Africa and Canada. They are working to incorporate the latest scientific advances, both for rainfall forecasting and understanding the phenomena triggered by rainfall, such as floods and debris flows. The latter phenomenon has been the subject of Professor Alan Bateman's work, director of the Group of Research on Sediment Transport for many years. In the River Morphodynamics Laboratory, we have a steep channel that ascends up to 30 degrees. We fill the channel with material simulating the terrain and we circulate water through the upper side to produce the combination of water and stones. When the grains are very fine, the porosity is low and, therefore, it is difficult for water to penetrate. Water sweeps away the material to turn into a hypervicious flow. In contrast, when the material is granulated and the porosity is very high, the flow is faster. The main factors leading to debris flows are intense rainfall in mountain areas and the features of the mountain. Trees are another factor. These may fall into the mud flows, impeding fluidity and behaving as natural dams that form and fall down continually in a pulsating way. Debris flows are a relatively frequent phenomenon in many parts of Europe especially in the Mediterranean basin, as in Italy. In Italy, the debris flow risk is very high, and uh, this risk is, um, uh, affects a lot of uh, areas. In, for example, in Campania and Apennine, we have all these uh, slopes covered by uh, ashes coming from ancient uh, volcano eruptions and uh, these uh, soils are uh, over very high degree slope and therefore uh, they may mobilize after a severe rainstorm. 
All this research will provide new understanding that can be used to improve forecasting systems and also to develop more advanced warning systems than those currently available. Currently, we are able to give different dynamic index of hazard to identify and to uh, forecast different uh, risk situations for protection, uh, civil protection. Inside the in projects, we are creating tools to take advantage of the forecast uh, rainfall uh, fields in order to give some uh, index and warnings of risk at different points and cells of, of the river. These tools are able, thanks to the, to the rainfall fields and to the meteorological radar observations, which are giving information of the current rainfall in the territory and also to give projections to give forecasts for the next hours in order to improve the risk uh, management for the civil protection agencies. Regarding Europe, we take into account the IFAS, the European Flood Alert System, which is a system in charge of simulating and forecasting different floodings at different countries all over Europe. The European Union also asks for developing new tools to be applied to real situations in order to mitigate the negative effects of floods and to deal with emergency management. The applications of these tools range from risk cartography and improved operational rainfall forecasts to flood risk warnings in specific points of the drainage network. The objective of Heights inside this uh, European project in Prince is to transfer all the research that is uh, performed by the different partners that uh, are inside this project into tools that can be used by the different institutions that work in the, in the prevention of, of floods and, and, and warnings. And at the end, the object is to, to have something that can be useful for our, our society. In order to ensure the applicability of its developments, the IMPRINTS project involves not only research and development centres, but also the institutions in charge of flood risk management. Thus, it has six hydrographic test basins for validating and improving the new tools for issuing warnings and reducing and mitigating the problems related to floods. These basins are the Gardon d'Andouze Basin in the Rhone Alps area, the Verzaska and Linth basins in the Swiss Alps, the right bank basin of the Sele River in the Campania region of Italy, and in the Iberian Peninsula area, the Guadalhorce Basin in Andalusia and the Llobregat River Basin in Catalonia. Taken together, these represent the diversity of European basins at risk. We are now at the fluvial park of the Besos River, a park around Barcelona where the people can come to enjoy biking, jogging, playing. But it is also a flooding area in which flash flood occurs. To guarantee the security of the people here, we need early warning systems. And the Imprints project wants to provide the most advanced technological solutions to the risk managers taking care of these warning centers. All this effort towards new understanding and new tools will allow for a better implementation of the European Directive on Flooding will help in the daily task of the warning centres and will facilitate better management of emergency situations. It will also provide better information, education, communication and, in general, better awareness among inhabitants of areas with risk of flooding. Consequently, we will be able to react and take decisions more effectively in order to live better with risks risks that are associated with such a privileged environment as our mountains and Mediterranean coast. <laughs>